On your left are three tape cartridges. Which one would you guess goes with the device on the right? It is a handheld tape recorder and player. Would you guess this cassette, this cassette, or this one? Well, if you guessed this one, you are absolutely correct. This is the tape cartridge for the Stenacord Reminder, made in Austria, and I would guess it was probably made in the 1960s. And our cartridge goes right there on the right in that slot. Now, the interesting thing about this cassette is that it's very much like the EW3 or the, the one from Grundig. They're very similar. What makes them similar is that they both are using the rim drive and the rim drive is actually on the reel of the cassette. So just like you saw in my previous video of this, this one is also a rim drive cassette. And let's get a little bit of a close up here so you can see what it looks like. It's got some uh, groovy little lines, swirly lines in here that uh, move around when the tape is moving, which is pretty cool. So there's where your tape cartridge goes. There's the slot for it. And notice that there is only one control here. And the reason that there's only one control is that the control is actually done with the cassette in the housing. So the tape actually acts as part of your button movement or your button function. Here is a lock control. This is a, uh, it's, it's sort of like a speed control here, and or actually I think this is volume. This is a speed control here, okay? So it kind of gives you a little bit of flexibility with the playback speed. On the bottom, there's nothing, not much of anything at all. I'm not sure what this slot here does. There may have been something there when I got it and it fell out, or it just might not have anything at all. These are slightly smaller. I think these are two and a half millimeter plugs. And you have a, uh, a power connector as well as a headphone jack there. There's your speaker. Your speaker is also your microphone. Your take up spindle goes on the top. So let's go ahead and put that in like that. Our cartridge is now in place. To record, we're gonna press this button and I've got a little bit of contact cleaner that's kind of stuck around there because I cleaned the record button. So let's see if we can record something here. Hello my friends in YouTube land. This is the Stenacord Reminder. It is made in Austria or was made in Austria. All right, let's see how our recording turned out. Notice pressing down on the bottom edge of the cassette is rewind. Up here is both play and record if the record button has been pressed. Hello, my friends in YouTube land. This is DataBits here, and you are looking at the Stenacord recorder that was made in Austria. This is called the Reminder. The Reminder came in this beautiful striped box. It is gorgeous, isn't it? And inside the box, is a really cool carrying case. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed this recording. Goodbye. Not only did our steno cord come with this amazing case here, uh, you can see the name on there, and, and look how amazing that is. Um, not only did it come with that, but it came with this little head cleaning tool. Look at that. So I can easily take out my cartridge and clean the heads on the inside. You can see the big audio head right there. Go ahead and polish up that little booger. So you'll notice as tape recorders go, this particular tape recorder is missing a couple of things. It is missing a capstan and a pin troller. These are non-existent. But what you do have is a take up roller here that is, there, is your rim drive and then we have this one over here and that is part of our rewind. So when I press in on the tape and push this uh, carriage to the left, you'll see that that wheel there is engaged. 
and it's actually on top of what looks like a like I don't know like your regular old flywheel you'll see more of that here shortly and then here once I'm playing you'll see that is engaged as well so very interesting system and very simple all right and there is a warning on here so I'm guessing that it says do not use batteries that are leaky use only leak proof batteries okay word to the wise so let's go ahead and take these out these are all flathead screws and I'll show you some of the other stuff I had to do to get this thing running as well as it was running just a minute ago which isn't that great the volume on this is really really low I had my pickup mic very close to it so that you could hear the audio and it seems pretty loud when you have another microphone next to the speaker I am guessing that the speaker in this thing is what's known as a crystal microphone or a crystal speaker just because it is such a low wattage or low volume output and I found that out because I tried to replace the speaker that's in here and practically got no volume at all so that was not a good idea so we remove this part here and you'll see the little I don't know should we call it a transducer there little uh, I don't know almost like a telephone microphone and pick up there I'm not sure what this little potentiometer right here does or this resistor but apparently it has something to do with the recording volume or playback one of the two all right so with that out now you can see one of our take up spindles here and we're going to go ahead and remove the battery pack lay that off to the side now i did replace these two wires on here because they were too short and one of them kept breaking off so uh, once again here's our audio head recording and playback head we've got our motor here this potentiometer right here actually does adjust the speed and i've got it all the way up so I'm guessing our motor is a little wore out for its age. And then to remove this uh, carriage piece here, there is a screw right here. And then we've got this little, uh, little C clamp here. And I believe the way I got this out before is I just stuck my screwdriver inside of it. And just pulled that little sucker off like that. So easy, right? And then this screw is so big, I can take a giant screwdriver as I bump the camera. Okay. And then that comes off. So let's carefully pull this out of place because it has wires attached to it. And we'll set this off to the side right here. Okay, so now you can see where that screw connected, which was right about right there. That's where that giant screw attached. And then we've got our motor here, and here's the weird configuration for the belt. So the belt comes around the top of the motor, top of the spindle, goes around this wheel right here, pulley, goes around that flywheel there, and then comes back. This flywheel here actually has a uh, a speed adjustment graph on the top of it like a strobe and you can set the speed in it there was a couple times where i did get it to set properly notice you've got 50 hertz and 60 hertz right there and i'm sitting under a 60 hertz fluorescent light so uh, that was very helpful to uh, to get that set properly um, notice you've got more of your circuit board going on over here so the circuit board itself is kind of split up from this side to this side. And then um, I borrowed the C-clip off of this particular roller. Just has this plastic thing on top. Take that off, little cap. And then that pulls off. Shows you a little bit more of what's going on on the inside there. So it's very uh, similar to a turntable honestly as far as the way this thing operates you got your motor and your and your spindle your literally a turntable in there 
So uh, let me go ahead and put the batteries back in and uh, we'll kind of see what it looks like to operate it. These uh, switches right here control fast forward or rewind. Okay, so on the top of your carriage is this little hook and that hook pulls these switches one way or the other. Over to the right here is your record and playback switch. Very common in almost all tape recorders and uh, very, very common to have to clean that in order to get proper engagement of your sound. There's play. Rewind goes the other way. Notice everything goes much faster at that speed. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but my strobe is actually pretty close to the 60 hertz setting right here. You can see these faint black lines moving slowly to the left there. I'll go ahead and turn the potentiometer so that you can see what turning this does. So there's its slowest setting all the way up to the fastest. And turning the potentiometer while in the rewind mode has no effect on the speed of the motor. So needless to say, I had to replace the belt in this unit and uh, I got lucky in the sense that I was able to find a belt that would match it. I try to keep belts out of old tape recorders and little uh, cheap Walkmans and that sort of thing because they come in handy for this kind of thing almost exactly. And guys, this will wrap up our video about the Stenachord Reminder from Austria, another tape format you did not know existed. Please subscribe to the channel, share this video with a friend, leave a comment below. You can follow me on Facebook at the following address that you see on your screen. Get a lot of interactivity there and cool comments as well. And uh, you can support me on Patreon if you feel the desire to do so. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time.